Okay, in this video, we're going to see how to adapt our ideas from estimating scalars to vectors. Okay, so um, it makes sense that in many interesting scenarios, we'll have more than one observed random variable. Um, so we'll call them y1 through ym, and we'll use those to estimate more than one um, unobserved random variable, which we'll call x1 through xn. Okay, and usually it's convenient to organize these random variables into vectors. So we'll say that we have the x vector, which is x1 through xn stacked together as a column, and y is y1 through ym stacked together as a column. And the columns are maybe of different lengths, and that's fine. So here's just the basic framework. So we have a prior distribution. So in the discrete case, that would just be a PMF. In the continuous case, a PDF. So here they are. So we have a prior now on the vectors. We have an observation model, which is a conditional PMF in the discrete case and a conditional PDF in the continuous case, now again over vectors. An estimation rule now has to put out a vector. So the vector is the vector of estimates for x1 up to xn, and they can use y vector as an input. And the mean squared error now is the sum of the mean squared errors for the individual random variables. So each of the xi's has a mean squared error, we just add them up. We can get that through this um, inner product if we wish. Okay, so the best possible thing we can do is the vector MMSE estimator. Okay, and that has a nice compact formula. So this is the optimal thing to do, but, and we can just write down what it is. So here it is, I can just write conditional expectation of x given the y, taking the value y. That opens up into this vector, so I have these individual conditional expectations for x1 up to xn. They each take y vectors fixed, and each of these just looks like an average over the conditional PDF, or sorry, PMF in this case, in the discrete case for x, and um, this integral using the conditional PDF in this other case. Okay, so there's some extra notation, but the concept is basically the same. You just take the average holding Y fixed. Unfortunately, analytically and in practice, it is very hard to work out what this estimator actually is, even for a specific known distribution. Um, and in practice, it can be really hard to figure out um, what this estimator should be from data. Okay, so uh, we're basically just going to Note that you can define the MMSC estimator in the vector case, and we're not really going to use it. Okay, instead, what we're going to do is focus on linear estimators, and that will help us avoid these challenging computations. Okay, so we are going to restrict ourselves to linear estimators of the following form. So the estimator x hat is going to be a matrix A times y vector plus b vector, which is just some offset. Okay, and we get to pick this vector, sorry, this matrix and this vector. That's what we're allowed to do. And so the vector linear least squares error or LLC estimator, that looks just like the thing we defined before. So it's the mean of X vector in this case, plus the cross covariance matrix times the inverse covariance matrix, Y vector minus the mean vector for Y. Okay, so we remember that the covariance matrix is this object where we take the outer product of y minus its mean and we average that. We end up with this matrix of covariances. So each um, entry, so the ith jth entry has the covariance between the ith and jth variable. So the ith jth entry has that. And then on the diagonal, we have the variances. All right. The cross covariance matrix is just the same thing, except we're now taking the covariance between x and y terms. Okay, so I take the outer product between x minus its mean and y minus its mean. I end up with covariance of x1, y1 here, down to covariance of xn, y1, so on, going down to covariance of x1, ym, covariance of xn, ym. So I just organize all the covariances between x and y terms into a matrix. Okay, so those are the two matrices that I actually need to work out. Once I have these matrices, the formula is just that one line formula, and I'm just replacing scalar multiplication in addition with vector multiplication, matrix multiplication rather, and vector addition. Okay, so I'll just quickly say the properties. Um, 
these are not the most important things for us in this class, but you might use them in later classes. So the vector LLC estimator is unbiased. So if you average it, you will get the average of the thing you were looking for. So the average of x, the mean vector of x. Its error is orthogonal to any linear function of the observation. So what that means is if I take the error vector, so in that case, that would be the true x minus the predicted x, that's the error. And I try that against a y plus b for any a and b, then I'll just get zero or really a zeros matrix because everything here is a vector. If I have a jointly Gaussian vector, then the MMSC estimator is the same as the LLSC estimator because Gaussians are nice and that lots of things work out to be linear for Gaussians. Um, we can derive this estimator from the unbiasedness and orthogonality properties. So the two properties I had below, if you uh, believe you need those in order to have the best possible linear estimator, and you can show that that's true, then you can derive the form of the estimator. In practice, the most interesting thing is we just need to, again, collect first and second order statistics, which are pretty easy to get. Um, and then we can form this estimator. All right. So how does this work with real data? So usually you see this um, vector LLC estimator applied in practice to real data sets. And there, in the context of statistics, you'll often hear it referred to as multivariate regression or general multivariate regression. Um, so the data set is just this collection of pairs of vectors. So x1 vector, y1 vector, up to xn vector, yn vector. And what we need to do is estimate the mean vectors, covariance, and cross-covariance matrices. So we do that exactly like we did in the scalar case. So we get the sample mean vectors. That just means averaging the vectors that we have to get a mean vector estimate, which we call the sample mean vectors. Okay, we do the same thing for the sample covariance matrix. We take the outer product of y minus its mean. Um, so we do this, y minus its mean times y minus its mean transpose, we use the one, minus, one over n minus one again to avoid bias. We do the same for the cross covariance matrix, except now we're going to have um, x in place of y here, but otherwise everything's the same. And now we can form our multivariate regression model. So what we're gonna do is just predict x by adding its mean vector times the cross covariance matrix times the inverse covariance matrix of y times y minus its mean. And the mean squared error, we can also just work out um, using this formula here. Okay. So this is just, in case you want to apply this to real data, we've just collected all these formulas into one place.